uh, I was going to kind of start with uh, okay. This is uh, something I I don't think I covered this one, but uh, it's uh, it is the uh, Secret Teachings, page one twenty four kind of towards the bottom. In fact, it's the last uh, paragraph on page 124, okay? Um, when you breathe in heaven and earth, sound and spirit are harmonized in one beat. Oops, here I am, okay, all right. That is Kotokama. Right? A reverberation that flies throughout the cosmos. Okay? That's actually a definition. Does it help much? I thought we just maybe explore that for a second. For this to occur, sound, body, and spirit must be united. Then real techniques will appear. The aim of training in Aikido is to unite mind and body and to refine and polish the spirit in order to generate a wonderful power. This is the heart of Budo training. So there's quite a bit there. And um, one thing that, that's kind of interesting, he brings in mind and body at the end of that, but in the original part of that paragraph, uh, when you breathe in heaven and earth, sound and spirit are harmonized. Okay. Doesn't really mention mind here. Heaven to earth, earth may represent a level of body. Heaven may be a level of mind on some level. So in that way, but it's not a direct reference to mind. You see, so then he brings mind in at the, at the end, mind and body, possibly heaven and earth, uh, are maybe not totally interchangeable, but they might be close. And if you were to look at the heaven aspect as mind and the earth aspect as body, but then you also have, he brings in, again and again, sound and spirit. And uh, that is something that, uh, you know, is also used to, you know, and he brings breath in. When you breathe in, when you breathe in, These other things, heaven and earth, sound and spirit, are harmonized in one beat, one beat. That is kotokama, direct definition. A reverberation that flies through the cosmos. Okay, so the other things he's mentioned, if you do some of the research, is the universe is Kototama. The universe came out of Kototama. We come out of the universe, so we are also in our own way Kototama. Uh, the, the Kototama he's talking about the reverberation reverberation so something 
an original movement. In some sense, I think we go out, come back, or come into itself, go out. And you know, to some degree, there's a beat or a pulse or vibration. And then, you know, that as creation kind of went out, it went into sub reverberations and sub sub reverberations. So you have your Agu-Ego, Kachi-Kuke-Go, and Japanese syllabary, uh, you know, your 75 sounds, so to speak. Here we have A E I O U and consonants and everything. So, but if everything, okay. When you breathe in, heaven and earth, sound and spirit are harmonized in one beat. That is kototama, a reverberation that flies throughout the cosmos. For this to occur, sound, body, and spirit must be united. Then he says real techniques will appear. Okay. In other words, what's real or techniques kind of tied to that original chord or reverberation or impulse. Oh, we got somebody else. That's good. So um, that that part of it, I just thought was uh, was fascinating. Kind of put it in. We'll go back over it a little bit later. Um, let's see. And we picked up Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Anyway, um, hey, sir, hey. I said, uh, yeah. Um, how is your leg doing? Um, much better. I was actually able to jog last night almost full speed. So it's been a couple okay. weeks. So. Thank okay. You. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, anyway, uh, you just kind of tuned in. We were kind of reading uh, just a passage from the Secret Teachings, page 124, the last paragraph. And uh, so we were kind of going over, you know, essentially really saying take one breath and when you harmonize, uh, you know, certain things, you know, you harmonize your body, your spirit, uh, heaven and earth, uh, then everything kind of comes together in one reverberation, impulse, whatever it is. And uh, that particular thing, he defined as kototama. And, and so, you know, that, that part of it I thought was interesting because, you know, he refers to kototama. But then again, he actually talks about, you know, how that original, original, everything came out of that original beat or reverberation. And there are many sub reverberations and sub sub reverberations that came out of that. And so here we are here. But we all come out of that original awakening, reverberation, okay? So um, that, that part of it, I just thought was uh, kind of cool. I just thought maybe we would uh, go over that maybe a bit later. But one of the things, for example, you know, there's a movement, you know, heaven and earth, whatever it is, uh, body, spirit, as you breathe in, there's a reverberation. There's a reverberation. Body, spirit, boom, heaven, earth, there's a reverberation, boom, 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 boom. boom. So maybe, you know, the, the actual sense of the movements all come out of that original, original impulse, movement, the kind of yin yang, water, fire. And so as we go back more see, towards an original, 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 
level of ourselves. See, he doesn't mention mind in that first part because mind and I get so tied together. So I think he kind of trained, he, he tracked the body back. Of course, you know, mind and I sort of go through that as you kind of go back and you go back further and further and further. And there will be at that point an original version of ourselves, you know, where that reverberation first started and established a relationship with that. And boom, 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 boom. Whatever movement, that's what he, you know, to some people, real technique is maybe not copying the forms, but boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. And apparently, our sensei used to carry a little painted pointer stick with him. You can't, you look kind of weird carrying a, a bow can even around or a jaw around, but you carry this little pointer stick. Well, it could be a bow can. Or it could be a staff spear, boom, 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 boom. But if everything came out of that boom, boom, reverberation, reverberation, boom, reverberation, thrust, just boom, boom. And, you know, associating sounds with those, spirit, sound, sound is a vibration. Anyway, um, let's uh, move into the other run. Okay, so we're going to not reverse the camera here. <clears throat> and, okay, let me also, I forgot to bring my lock. Zip back. <clears throat> Okay. And so, uh, one of the uh, things I just thought we kind of start out with uh, is. Uh, Getting back to more of that original level of ourselves, which was boom, right in that big first reverberation, which he calls kototama, boom, that first vibration, that first reverberation, that first sound, that first ah. Maybe there had to be a first silence for there to be a first sound, a first in-breath or the first word to go out. Okay, so one of the things I thought we'd do is just maybe uh, start out with a little bit of sitting. So, um, let's just take a, this basic uh, again, something we've covered your thoughts or real thoughts. But a thought doesn't have to be about anything that's real at all. So there's a constant stream of thoughts going on. And that tends to dull our inner experience of who we are, which means it's sort of like it's a room, but we can't leave the room. It's kind of, we're talking about social isolation right now. Uh, we isolate ourselves from our truer nature by going around and around there. So what I thought we'd do a little bit is just simply use the breath a bit. Now he talked about breathing in 
And so I want you to chart a little bit. You're a nose breather. And your nose breathing, you're right in there. I can't see past the news feed on my phone. And just be easy with it. We all spend a lot of time there. In fact, uh, de facto, when, when we lose our attention uh, and just let it drift, we choose to just drift back here. Now, settle the breathing a little bit more. So at least be a, a shoulder chest breather. I don't want you to try to control your breathing. It's just the breathing is going a little deeper. See, when I'm breathing here, I'm aware of all that noise. When I'm in the noise, I'm aware, not aware of it. I'm just caught up in it. And right here, if you try to fix that, you get caught up back in it. So let's be, see if we can be a belly breather. Instead of trying to go back, stay here and fix that, let's just go a bit deeper. My system starts to quiet down. It's still going on, it's just my attention. It's kind of in a calmer, more open level. Kind of what I get here is that we're so used to the noise. When I start to get kind of really deeper, quieter, there's kind of this, this almost addictive pull back up. Uh, be easy with it. Note it. Breathe to the belly. I'm conscious of the fact that all of a sudden when I just, that sort of addictive draw up, push up, and you kind of stay with this, all of a sudden the, the space starts to open up around me. So it's not just a calm feeling here, it's a space of calm starts to kind of happen. If I go, okay, what's that about? I I I, I go back back up. I, I take the experience back under the upper chatter. So that does happen. Just sort of resettle, recalibrate. And we're going to do one more. So I'm sitting on the floor. You might be sitting on a couch or something. I'm going to breathe to the floor.
So. Ah, that will we do. So we've done a little bit of that. Um, any uh, buddy with uh, maybe any comments or anything you'd like to share on that pattern? We're using the breath to get to a, a deeper level of I self so that the we're getting closer to that original reverberation. Okay, anybody with a comment or David, anything you'd like to share a bit? I feel like such a failure because the whole time I was sitting there, my mind kept going all over the place thinking about all these other things. <laughs> yeah. And I had to keep coming back to what you were do doing. Uh, well, see, that, that's the uh, the thing. I mean, in those sense, they ran that whole thing about the push-pull of the universe. Okay. Um, to some degree, there's a lot of energy we all have. Okay. Uh, Don Juan in the Don Juan books put it well. He says, you know, you can either be an ordinary person or an impeccable warrior, sorcerer, shaman. He says the amount of energy is the same. So one of the things about the actual reverberation, it's a certain amount of what you call your own soul force. And what happens is it pushes. And it kind of, this is a very, very, um, place we get pushed to, okay? But what happens is a certain, so there, I would call it a type of soul isolation. We're in social isolation right now because of the uh, neglect of the government, uh, the irresponsible behavior of politicians trying to reopen the country. So we're getting this massive surge of uh, new cases of the COVID-19 coronavirus. So, but, we isolate ourselves from our truer, deeper self or soul spirit by being pushed up here. So one of the things about it is, you know, uh, for example, track your breath. See, if I try to fix this, um, it's gonna take too much energy because it's being fed by my soul force. So one thing I'll sense is, is calm the spirit or soul, calm the soul, in other words, return to the divine, your more original nature. So don't try to fix this. Track your breathing. Your breathing. Your breathing. There's still a push up. But after a bit, you just let it go. You just are very easy with it. Um, anybody else? Anything to share on the uh, journey so far? Okay. I'm going to take a, another tap in a second, but let's... Let's do a standing version of that. Breathe through your nose. This is kind of the zone of the eye. And the interior dialogue just going on 24 seconds. Breathe through your chest. See, by increasing the actual depth of the breath, my sense of myself is changing a bit. Now, see if we can breathe through the belly.
Now, it's gonna be harder, breathe. Clear your hips. Now we're going to breathe to our knees. And I'm not plastic man, so I'm not going to be able to touch the ground, but we can breathe to our feet. Takes a little longer and it rebounds. Ah, oh, and just pause for a bit, see if we can do that without the hand. And check the uh, body feel. Yo. We'll relax. See, this level is always going on. It's just we get habitually we get pushed up here. But there's also an equal pull. Back to our more original. Oops. Okay, I always make the mistake here. Switch camera. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, anybody with uh, an observation on the standing one? Uh, you're just sneakily trying to get us to connect heaven and earth again, aren't you? Well, that's one of the consequences of it, although that's a little bigger. All we're doing is doing our breath. Okay, in other words, so since you're talking heaven, earth, body, spirit, right? <laughs> but when you can start to trap what we call the I self going back to itself on a more original, uh, just working the breath. So I can get a little too, I'm gonna go back to heaven and earth right here. And uh, it gets so big, that's the other thing, as much as we go this way, we can expand out and we get this sort of fine place in the upper understanding. Now, those sensei loves to call this the awareness. And then he slaps people around and says, so get into the, 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 the feel experience of it. Okay, so um, let's just say we're just using the breath to get back to a more original and let's not label the the destination yet if i say it's enlightenment it's something else that then it in some sense i i kind of by naming you know the destination i i sort of leave the journey where the journey becomes more an awareness as opposed to an experience okay but good okay uh anybody else just just we we did that thing standing Okay, um, and since he mentioned it, body, or he must sound spirit, okay, I thought what we do is to go through, which we haven't done in a while, we've been doing a lot of movement, uh, sound, okay, 
So, um, and again, uh, I can start up here, but we've got a bit of work. So if, even if you check, for example, my, my, my feel of the ground on my feet, or it's just much more experiential. My system is calmer. All that stuff in the world is going on, but I don't have to feed it by jumping more into the eye interior dialogue. I can just be easy with that, just stay a little bit more present. So what I thought we'd do is just a, a chant that uh, I never heard, but the Dome Sensei, uh, the Sisa Sensei used to do. And that is the Ya Yi Ma Mi chant. Okay. So um, we're going to do this together. A E I O U. Ya Yi Yu Ye Yo. Ma Mi Mu. Me mo. There go. Ya yi, ma mi, ya yi, ma mi. Okay? And sometimes, you know, doing the chants, feel a little self conscious. That's the I. Okay? So um, let's, uh, let's start. So I'm going to chant. I'd like you to chant with me. Ready? Ya yi yu ye yo Ma mi nu me mo Ya yi can't tell whether I, I heard anybody chanting with me because we're away from kind of our, our, our actual sort of we're all muted. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now that, that if you don't want if you don't want to be on camera, just mute it. But okay. Now the question I have is we did the grieving and check check the body feel place from doing the sounds. Uh, this place is uh, similar, but not quite the same. There's still the calm. Right, right here, I would just say instead of just calm, die deep, it, it's calm, but there's kind of like a glow that the sounds impart. That's just all I'm thinking of right now. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, just what's going on for you after the uh, the sound practice? A lot of the, uh, there was a lot of, my back was really hurting before when we were sitting. Yeah. And all of that, while we were making the sounds, that all, that all dropped away. So yeah. something, the breathing or something and, and a lot of the aches and pains that I was fighting with before have, have eased. Well, you know what's interesting is how much of body discomfort dis-ease 
is really just hanging out in this zone. That literally, I mean, what's your immune system like when you hang out here 24 seven and when you go to sleep, this amps up, you know, in your dreams and everything. So yeah, I, I mean, uh, that's interesting if the back, yeah, all of a sudden starts to not hurt or ache. That, that's, that's worth noting. Anybody else? Bonnie, do you have something to say? Did you raise your hand? You don't necessarily have to say anything. No, I, I did notice the, the reverberation in the energy field start to build with that. Um, after we stopped chanting, I was still feeling some of the reverberations continue. So I was, yeah. don't, don't quite have words for it, just experiencing it. Okay, all right. Yeah, the, the thing is, you know, the sounds, all movement, is, is something the universe going on. And, you know, as we get back to a more original level of ourselves, we become more in tune with that. Okay? Yeah, if you do, the Do Sensei uh, once said that, you know, when he was first starting out, you know, he noticed a sensei that a lot of sound. So uh, both he and Robert Frazier, when we first, uh, when I first started Aikido in 1969, we would do these, uh, not me, I, mean, I was just in the class, but they would lead these uh, weekend, uh, they called them key-ins, you know? Yeah. And so we would do a lot of sound work. We do a lot of meditation as a part of it. Because it was, a, you know, a lot of it was around, okay, you know, everybody else is kind of doing Aikido form, uh, but Osensei was Osensei because he knew something about consciousness. And so we did an awful lot of that. And so one thing is, yeah, the, the actual reverberation of the sounds is going on. But when we're caught up here, uh, we don't notice it. So as you start to go back more towards an original level of yourself, that starts to um, open up. Anybody else? Okay. <clears throat> so I am going to check the camera. And what we're going to go into is the soak principle. I thought, you know, a lot of what um, there's the awareness of, and then there is the feel experience of, and you really need both. Okay? And um, a lot of times, for example, stories, they come up in meditation, and there's a story, and then there is the deeper feel experience that the story is supposed to awaken. And so we're just going to go through the story of Izanagi following Izanami into the underworld and then getting kicked out of the underworld and being chased out of the underworld by all these spirits, these hideous spirits, and being so shaken by that that the way Osensei puts it in the secret teachings, he's not a god anymore. And that's an interesting one because, like, okay, on our truer, deeper nature, maybe we are all God, goddess. But we're so used to hanging out here. So Izanagi goes in there, a God, he comes out of here with all this reverberate. He's not a God anymore. So what happens is he has to find this magic river, the, the river Odo, and he soaks in that river. And he gets back to being a god. And the word for sound in Japanese is oto. And all you gotta do is voice the to, 
and is Odo. So there's some speculation that what O Sensei was doing during Izanagi, soaking in that river. So what we're going to do let's go over the sounds again so uh, you can mute it if you like okay ready a sound. Hopefully I get to a place. It's quite a place, but it also is very alive. So it's a little bit like that river. I want you to do is just soak there. You can get in that story or another story may come up or knowledge may come up or an insight may come up. But getting into the field of experience is more just soaking up. How long do you have to soak? When you're soaking, you're soaking. That residual of the eye mind tends to want to go for words. So be easy. Again, you may get that sort of that push to go back up. Just be easy with it. Continue to sew. If any of us were ever in a Drool, life and death with blades. This is where you want to be. 
But it's also a rather calm open day. You might become aware of things, for example, David's uh, thing with uh, his back. Uh, I was carrying some tension in my right hip. I didn't realize it, but it just let go. Being very easy with where you are and just something. And there's that push upward into that interior dialogue part. And you're not forcing yourself into water where you're going to drown with breathing. But I'm also conscious of the fact my breathing is, is uh, very relaxed. I'm going very deep. Although I'm not working on breathing right now, I'm just working on soaking in that river, the river of sound, river of world. I can get very busy making the sounds. So sound has a companion called silence. And that's a really good place for soaking. Movement is good too, but it has a partner, stillness, which we can take advantage of and soak in. And how long do you do this? Well, you could set a clock and if you got an appointment, which I do at two o'clock, then I got to pay attention to the time. If you're not used to this, you'll find yourself kind of drifting. So part of the training I have to go is to stay away and stay present in these places. And there is a drift sometimes into the upper awareness of it. So we're focusing quite a bit on staying in the feel experience of it. So you can track yourself with breath. And we used uh, more recently, sound. But no matter what, you wanna get into the feel experience of it. Okay, if you're sitting, stand. If you're standing, just be easy. Ah. And if you're muted, I uh, prefer if you unmute, okay? So uh, any, uh, Think about that, just the soaking. Uh, David, anything? Uh, my, my mind is starting to slowly quiet down. Yeah, that's okay. 
Yeah, I, I mean that that part of it is uh, the uh, the actual sense of it. He was talking about that reverberation. Then it was sub reverberations and sub sub reverberations and sub sub sub. So by the time we're here, everything is moving so fast, and that speed kind of maintains it, right? And so we're used to kind of thinking way too fast. So as one thing you'll find is as your eye mind quiets down, uh, the actual experience of things is starting to show. The soaking is starting to show. So you know things you can do is you, you can kind of do the practice on your own. Just practice soaking. Okay. I know I'm soaking when I'm not necessarily, you get insights, but you don't, oh, spin off on the insights. Like for whatever reason, my right hip went, uh, I thought, oh, I didn't know I was carrying any tension there. But then I didn't go into dialogue with myself around uh, the right hip and what that means. I mean, examine that later, okay? Um, any, anybody else? I'm just thinking I should be doing this every day during yeah. lockdown. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> what, what I kind of notice, you know, is that the um, um, actual interior dialogue, you know, is, is actually getting a lot faster, which means more stress. And, and so things like uh, meditation are, are good because, you know, to some degree, they, they the eye just gets cockier. And so, yeah, just, just to be able to kind of sit. When I first started Aikido, it wasn't a lot. But I would, because uh, we're doing a lot of it. We're doing a lot of chanting, a lot of sound. We did movement, but we did a lot of chanting, sound, meditation. So I used to sit. I used to do 15 minutes in the morning and very dutifully 15 minutes before I went to bed. And uh, it was actually kind of a masterful year, you know. Then I went to grad school, and even though I did that, uh, it was just the pressures of academia. Boy, that was, that was quite an experience. You just get caught up in the eye, dealing with, uh, you know, politics and, and everything. It was, it was really an education. Scary. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. I mean, you can do it on your own. It's just a matter of, you know, we, we're almost addicted to this pace that things move up here in that interior dialogue. Or anything can kind of get us a little bit more. Okay. I thought we'd do is we got a couple of minutes. So um, we're going to do some movement. So um, we've been doing the cut. So. I gotta watch out that lamp, okay? But, there you are, just swing.
Yeah, okay. What I'd like us to do, if it's convenient for you, so that's being very active. It's a little bit like the uh, sitting. So I'm going to sit for this amount of time. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Because sometimes just sit to sit. And likewise with this. Should I swim this many times? I, I should swim. But I'd like you to just sit down. There's, the, there's more exercise going on in that. It's actually, it's your conscious of. But there's kind of a presence when I swing and then I sit that I get with the sitting. Likewise, I just pick that up. It usually takes about eight or 10 to kind of get you know, everything kind of in gear, but it was uh, like two or three, boom, everything was like right there. So, you know, the meditation can help your motion. Conversely, the motion, movement, any motion, what is that like for you just with a type of a, just a quick sitting? And kind of what I'm noticing is that a lot of the deeper sitting experiential places you're starting to kind of naturally kind of come in as I just sit here without my having to summon down and like think about it. So anybody, uh, anything to share off of, you know, just the activity of the cut and the uh, sitting? A little different. We kind of went, you know, at the beginning, we were kind of just doing breath and a little bit of sound to a sitting place. And all of a sudden, we just shift into a, which can be a very intense movement mode, that cut. Uh, anybody? There, there was a moment while we were cutting where I felt like, oh, this is just right. These la And then as soon as I thought that, I lost my balance and my arms started to tighten up and I couldn't, and I couldn't keep cutting. I just completely lost everything. See, what the meditation is supposed to do, it's really supposed to open your system up. A lot of meditation, I thought what Mr. Barrett said, you know, in his, uh, oh, Sensei Shinto thing, uh, the, the thing I got the most out of was he was describing oh, Sensei's Ching Kong Kishin, oh, Sensei's meditation style, which was calming the soul returning to the divine, Ching Kong Kishin. And so the um, narrator or the person who was sponsoring and shooting the whole thing asked him about that, you know. And, um, you know, meditation tends to be about mind or I mind. And you go deeper in meditation. A lot of times you can't go finer in meditation, okay? But um, in Aikido, well, since his style, I think the deeper he went, the finer he went, deeper he went, the finer he went, your heaven, earth, so to speak. And uh, 
what happens sometimes is that when you are in a flow, if you pause to look at the flow, sometimes you get bumped out of the flow. All it takes is a thought. What do you do? You're easy with it. The flow is still going on. It's kind of like Bonnie's, you know, echoing. It's still going on whether you're making the sound or not. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I think I mentioned it fairly recently, but um, there was a guy named Steve who was uh, an English, you know, an English business. So he traveled all over, but he spoke fluent Japanese and he studied the um, karate with a Japanese instructor. He was doing Aikido, and he also started studying with an Aikido teacher, uh, and so. When, they were, when he was in Japan, he arranged a, a lunch for his karate teacher and his Aikido teacher met for lunch and they kind of had a discussion. And so Steve dropped by one of his travels and he was trying to talk, he was talking to me about the discussion they had. And the consensus of you know, what they came to. First level is body. You train the body. The sensei says it, you train the the soul, spirit by training the body, karate or aikido, okay? And then the second level was kimochi, which is feeling. You're not just moving the body well, there's a feel to it. And there's also kind of an inner kind of state or emotional mood behind the movements, kimochi. The third level, was key. Any emotion comes out of key, goes back to key. Okay? And the last level was really interesting. It was called, uh, this was like level four, right? It was called Shika Ryoku. And the gist of it, I asked him, what the hell is that and he said well the consensus was because it was about two budo teachers talking back and forth and consensus was you get a river pretty deep one the current on the top is really fast it's kind of like the, the interior dialogue bottom of the river Seems like it's moving really slow or not at all, but it's moving really fast. So as you kind of go deeper, sometimes you, you see, if you go deep, upper, calmer, you, you go finer. But as you go deeper, calm, there's more energy associated with that depth. So if all of a sudden you're in a pretty good deep place and all of a sudden you're a thought, you get hit by the speed. And so part of it is like, you know, you're in this vast, I mean, I think what Sensei was in the beautiful storm of creation, but he was so calm, that storm, instead of being chaotic, was harmonious and loving. And so uh, as you go deeper, sometimes you get thrown out, just be easy there. It's like Bonnie's thing. That's still going on, the actual river. But as you go deeper, it appears to be calmer, but there's more energy moving through that calm. And so when you're getting all that stuff right, and all of a sudden you think, you get spun out. Keep going, okay? Anybody else? A uh, question or anything that uh, came up during that? It's a little different than just, you know, some of the other approaches we, we did to the sitting. Okay, um, what I thought we'd do today is, uh, um, instead of having a discussion, I'm just going to go through the Tai Chi a couple of times, okay? So, uh, let me do this. It's just about everybody here has been through it, so we're just going to go through the form a couple of times. I'm going to get my yeah, 
the system, okay? And so again, we start with the breathing here too. So relaxing the chest, breathing naturally, commencement of Tai Chi.
Any uh, questions about the uh, 30 movements? Uh, yes. just, uh, just that I was able to do them with my calf, so I'm happy. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the Tai Chi is actually very deceptive. I remember, you know, Master Choi, he didn't uh, have a car. He didn't drive. In fact, he made a joke when somebody says, how come you always ride the bus? He says, you know, you know why don't you get a car? And he says, I lack the hand-eye coordination to drive a car. It's really kind of Kind of, you know, I mean, I don't know. He might have been truthful. He didn't want to drive. He liked uh, riding the bus where he could relax. As opposed to drive a car, you got you it's a lot more work. But um, the bus lurched once, and he really sprained his ankle. And um, so, you know, he kind of brought it up in class once. If I was doing some hard form of kung fu. I couldn't do it, but a Tai Chi I can do. And I've done the same thing, you know, you're nursing a, a physical injury problem or something. Then I find I can still do the Tai Chi. You know, so that's good. Uh, anybody else? Any, any questions, any of the movements or? Um, uh, what, one thing that, that you can do sometimes, for example, is just do the Tai Chi. And so it's a, it's a different place, it takes me a slightly different place than the sword cuts do. But that was uh, when I first started in Aikido, I would do the Tai Chi and then I'd meditate. So I find, for example, that the Tai Chi, if I do the Tai Chi at the uh, quiets a lot of the interior dialogue of the I mind. So I get into a meditation place faster. Conversely, you know, by doing the, 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 the bookend cuts, which is very active, very fast, it, it takes me quicker to a meditation space. Something with the body, being the body more present, allows me kind of quicker to be meditation experience. Uh, anybody? Okay, I figure what we do is just go for a minute, go over the uh, passage in the uh, secret teachings again. So, we go here. Yeah, let me clear my throat. And put these on so I don't have to squint to read. Okay. Really funny about these glasses is when I just take them somewhere else. They're always falling off, right? But when I'm kind of doing this class and reading Mo Sensei, they stay on. Uh, so, anyway, I'm here. Going over that, again, if you've got this book. Um, this is a fascinating book because it's really based on a series of lectures that O Sensei did for what it was called the Aikido Shinbun, the Aikido newspaper. And so they, they would publish his lectures. And you know, there was a English language version of it. So, you know, sometimes you know you would um, get one of those Aikido English language things and go to the I mean the rest of it's promotions and everything like that. But you go to the next to last page and fold out, and there would be the most sensitive thing. So I always go there and ignore the rest of the <laughs> rest of the newspaper. And so they were all collected in this, and were translated by uh, John Stevens. That's it. So if you have the book, 
page 124, the very last paragraph. When you breathe in, heaven and earth, sound and spirit are harmonized in one beat. That is kototama, a reverberation that flies throughout the cosmos. And that's, there are probably a couple of other uh, definitions that a sensei would give about what kototama was, but that's a pretty comprehensive one. For this to occur, sound, body, and spirit must be united. Then real techniques will appear. The aim of training in Aikido is to unite mind and body and to refine and polish the spirit in order to generate a wondrous power. This is the heart of Budo or martial arts. And that, that was something that grabbed my attention. So. I just thought I'd bring it up. Uh, is there anybody with a question or comment on that? I mean, it's pretty stark. Question is, what do we do with it? Right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, this is the point, what do we do with it? Um, You know, if you were to kind of like go into, there's a first cause in the universe. Okay. Well, senseis do creation happening, universe coming into being. And there's that, what Mary Heine sensei used to like to call the moment before creation. I remember um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I get back from Japan and uh, you know, a lot of the stuff I got was totally you know, framed in Shinto and more, you know, classical Japanese Budo. And um, when Nado Sensei opened San Jose Dojo in 1976, he invited me to teach. So I started going over there to his Monday class. And um, I was shocked that, that he was going into the energy without a lot of the Shinto stuff. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, energy is energy, key is key, but, uh, and, and to be honest with you, I'm also grateful for the fact that, you know, I got a lot of training in the Shinto from being around Hikizuchi Sensei to at least get a working model for myself. Uh, so I talked to Mary Haney Sensei and, um, she, I told her, I said, you gotta actually check this Nado guy out because he's going really original or, you know, he's doing fantastic stuff for the energy. He's not into like the standard, you know, Osensei Shinto stuff, which at the time Mary was really into. We, we all were, you know. And, and so, uh, for what, I can't remember, she came down at a time when Nado Sensei was gonna do a, workshop. He used to do them Sundays in Mountain View. 
Uh, he had a dojo on Castro Street. Now it's all high-tech companies and um, restaurants on Castro Street. But in those days, 197 Castro Street had a delicatessen on the bottom. And you could go up the stairs and go up the stairs and there were mats and mats. And it was a dojo and it was a kind of like the current San Jose dojo. It was jujitsu and Aikido sharing the space. And um, so we go up there um, <laughs> and You know, he has a certain sort of platform in front of this showman, right? And um, the business manager was a man named Ed who did both the jiu-jitsu, had a history of jiu-jitsu, but was kind of like the business manager for Aikido. He had, you know, there, there was a period of time when San Jose, Mountain View, San Francisco, before it was Aikido West, it was Aikido of Woodside, okay? And then came Aikido of Tamalpais. They were all under the umbrella of Aikido of Northern Cal, Inc. So Ed was this man, and he sort of, um, you know, he had a tie, he'd done jiu-jitsu, but he's mainly at that time Aikido, right? And so, you know, he's the person that, Kenny's the business manager, right? And so uh, I, I, I dragged Mary to this thing. And you know, there, there's the showman with those sensei's picture and everything like that. And there's a little kind of platform there. And so the those sensei says, Ed, can I move that onto the mat? And Ed goes, Yeah, not knowing what the those sensei is going to do it. So he takes the, the platform in front of the, the showman, he clears it off, nah, puts it on the tatami, which there it was, and he sits on it. So he takes the show. <laughs> and he sits on it, you know, and, and, and he, he, he sort of, you know, you, you recognize him right now as having, you know, his hair pretty much the way it was, you know, when I first started. But then he walks out and he's got his hair all permed up. It's not quite like an afro, but it's like that. Uh, uh, David probably remembers it from some years ago. And Mary is just don't know what to make of it. And I'm kind of going, holy Toledo, what's going on here? Because he makes his entrance. We haven't seen him. So all of a sudden he comes out with his hair cut. <laughs> and he sits on that thing that's, you know, where it basically supports, supports the stuff in front of the showman. Yeah, and, and then he goes into, you know, teaching a workshop, right? And um, it was a good workshop. And I remember that, you know, towards the end, one pattern. And you know, you, you, you go deeper, 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 deeper. Kind of you're at this very original place, a moment before creation. And then there's this, event reverberation, as our sensei calls it, or a seed germinating, or a original boom, boom, thunderbolt, boom, something like that. So, but there's a moment before creation. And uh, I remember, you know, fairly recently, you know, that actually is something now I feel pretty regularly in my meditations. So as you kind of go deeper, when I first met Mary, she um, liked the Tai Chi, but I used to meditate quite a bit. I said, how can you do that? How can you sit? And I said, I don't know, I mean, not for me, I, I can't not sit. <laughs> There's too much of this going on if I don't sit. And, and so it's amazing that she, you know, after the Japan thing, she really got very deeply into Tibetan meditation. And that's the basis of a lot of the way she teaches now, okay? But back then she was just, everything was charged in. And then she goes into this class, you know, and saying, well, he's doing all this stuff without the Shinto. And then he goes out there and takes the showman and sits on it. 
it was like, but by the end of it, you know, I, I don't know that she kind of knew what to make of it, but I found out from her later, yeah, that was actually the springboard for her to get more into deeper meditation, was that moment before creation. And then any movement, boom, becomes creation. And since it's at the very beginning, it's often original perfection designed with itself, which includes harmony. There's love, there's no hate, there's nothing other than love. There's beauty. And it's all off of an intelligent design, and there's that original reverberation and there is the moment before creation. And we're so busy here that it, we, we get burned out. We get absolutely hypnotized by this into just staying kind of self-isolation, right? In other words, we're in an I level of self, isolating ourselves from the deeper, finer levels of ourselves. So that original harmony, but it was since there was somebody who was trying to track the eye back all the way, there were boom, boom. He was standing at that place where creation was having, was unfolding perfectly off that original reverberation. And of course he practiced what he called the kototam. So, you know, I mean, that's why I kind of like that little thing we read today about that. And we kind of pursued more of what I would call more of a sitting. And then we did, you know, that, that the Bokan cut is a good one because if you're going crazy, um, just cut. But then sit after the cut. Okay. Anybody with a question or observation or something to share? You don't have to talk. It's just a lot of times, you know, what, what, what happens is um, a lot of the kototoma is, is, you know, not I speak, but you're in a deeper place. And that deeper space talks through you. Calm. That's different than I remember I'm supposed to be calm here, I better calm down. Root. And so you find yourself in more of a transparency. And whatever it is that space talks through you. So it's good sometimes to have a question because as you are going deeper, you'll find your questions change. If I don't have a question, I can just be sort of following the crowd. In 2016, a bunch of people were so pissed off about the political structure they voted for Donald Trump. I think a substantial portion of those people are pretty unhappy now. But they followed a trend. They were pushed by their own uh, lack of judgment by the energy. And this is not about who you vote for, but as you go deeper, you acquire a kind of spiritual discernment. And that's not to, there's a lot of, see, there's a lot of joy that's possible. But it's amazing that this actually masks the joy. I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that, but I'm so pushed, I don't really feel the joy of myself. So as we go deeper, right? See, there's a finer, but you also want to go deeper, deeper, finer. So the brilliant vision, the depth and roots of it. And so right there, you've got the heaven, you've got the earth. Um, at that point, um, 
we start to pick up the sound of reverberation in some aspect of it. And the spirit is actually something that, that shows itself through the body, mm, through motion, through action. And so, you know, that has to be my, you know, interpretation of the way, way, you know, what he was trying to say there. Mm. Uh, so anybody, anything? Anyway, uh, for me, a good session. I hope it was a good session for you. So I think what I'm going to do, I've got a, um, a QuickBooks session to do. So I'm actually checking in with a QuickBooks expert because I've got to do some online stuff. And it's amazing how systems are built. You know, they say, oh, you can, you can get help. Well, the help just puts you back into the system where there is no help. And then the system says, well, check this out. And then when you check that out, it doesn't help you at all. It just puts you back into the system, which is supposed to help you. So I'm actually uh, saying, okay, enough of this craziness. I'm going to consult. society, Jack. Uh, that's true. <laughs> you see, you know, I, I mean, there's a sense where you, you call it systems designed to fail. Right. That's what they are. The system is doing very well. It's, it's a big help that helps them get rid of you. That's right. Uh, there, there was that TV show in the 60s called The Prisoner, where, you know, uh, Patrick McGowan was a secret agent, quits, and he's put in this place. You don't know whether it's the opposition that wants to get his secrets or his own people that don't want him running around with those secrets. And, you know, it takes 16 episodes, he finally gets out. And then he goes right back to the beginning, does the same thing that got him put in, the, in what they call the village. So it's the same thing. Now that you're out, oh, I'm going to do the same thing that got me in here. It's, 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 a, it's a fascinating thing. I think that all of them are on YouTube. It's called The Prisoner. And uh, sometimes systems go that way, you know. All, see, every single time that anything seems to be able to help them in the village, it's just the plot that the people that run it have done to get at what's inside him. So around the 12th episode, see, it's not that he, you know, you realize that I can't trust anybody, but the realization is I have to trust me. The only thing I can trust here is me. And the whole show is about how they're trying to undermine that to get at what they think is the information in them or keep that information locked up where nobody else can get it. And so it, it's, it's an interesting thing. The more he tries to work within the village, you know, the more he gets shut down. And the more he realizes that all, the only person he can really trust is himself, then he starts to realize how oh, he can turn how the village works on the village. I haven't figured out how to do that with QuickBooks, so I'm going to consult an expert. Anyway, but thank you all. Good thank session you. today. Be seeing you, Sensei. Be seeing you. Or let's do the Vulcan. Do the Vulcan. Live long and prosper. All right. I've been watching uh, a little bit here and there Star Trek Discovery where young, young, young Spock comes in. So, anyway, take care. Yeah, the elevator scene with number one in Short Treks is awesome. Okay. It's All right. Spock's first day on the Enterprise. I got to watch that one. You know, <laughs> my, my favorite episode of uh, The Next Generation was part two of that series with him. I think it's called Resurrection or something. That was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wish Leonard Nimoy had done more. Oh, Unification, I think it was. Well, yes. it? Okay, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it says a lot, I, I mean, about the Spock character, who's by far my favorite, you know, in the whole Star Trek thing. Anyway, take care. Be seeing you. See you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, David. Bye, Bonnie.